In June 1942, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps forced British forces back across North Africa after a series of victories. It had decisively defeated the British Eighth Army in a series of engagements known as the Gazala Battles in June, taking the port of Tobruk and forcing the British out of Libya in disorder. If Rommel persisted, he had a possibility of capturing Alexandria and the Suez Canal, which would have disastrous strategic consequences for Britain's position in the Middle East and Asia. After being defeated again at Mursa Matru, the British Eighth Army retreated to El Alamein, sparking panic in Cairo, and forcing the Mediterranean fleet to leave Alexandria. The El Alamein line, which ran 40 miles from the coast to the impassable Quadra Depression, was a stronghold. Despite the fact that General Claude Auchinleck had stopped Rommel in his tracks during the First Battle of El Alamein in early July 1942, Churchill was growing frustrated with progress in the Western Desert. He arrived in Cairo in early August of that year and handed over command to General Bernard Montgomery. Montgomery restructured the 8th Army, bringing in new divisions and generals, and boosting his army's morale with his audacious fighting talk. He also strengthened ties between the army and the Desert Air Force, resulting in a more coordinated attack strategy. Despite the fact that he was running out of supplies, especially fuel, Rommel opted to press forward, relying on intelligence reports that the British were in chaos and would be unable to stop him. Between the 30th of August and the 7th of September, Rommel launched an attack known as the Battle of Alam Halfa, but the 8th Army held its ground, owing to excellent cooperation between the Army and the Air Force. Montgomery did not launch a counter-offensive, since he knew reinforcements were on their way, and he decided to wait. After six more weeks of careful preparation, the 8th Army was ready to attack. Under Montgomery's command, the Allies had 200,000 men and 1,000 tanks, They were up against 115,000 Germans and Italians, with some 550 tanks. In air support, the British enjoyed a superiority of 1,500 to 350. Furthermore, Allied air and submarine raids on Axis supply lines across the Mediterranean had hindered Rommel's troops from receiving necessary fuel, ammunition, and food replenishments. At El Alamein, the British Eighth Army had mostly M4A1 Shermans and M3 Lees, with a few Crusader Mark III's armed with the six-pounder cannon, and Valentine tanks armed with the two-pounder gun. The majority of the Axis tank force was made up of Italian M1340 tanks. Also, there were 93 Panzer III's with short-barreled 50mm gun, and 71 Panzer III's with long-barreled 50mm gun. There were additionally 30 Panzer IVs, equipped with the long-barreled 75mm KWK-40 gun. Rommel anticipated a major attack, and did everything he could, to prepare for it. He was a master of mobile warfare, but owing to a lack of fuel and transportation, he had to change his tactics. The Germans dug and fortified a defensive line, in considerable depth and strength. Rommel decided to shelter his men behind a deep and complex minefield, backed by strong anti-tank gun positions, called the Devil's Gardens, by the Germans. 
he had chosen a good defensive position, with a sea to the north and an impenetrable desert to the south, protecting his flanks. The German aim was to have a set-piece battle that would lure the British and their allies into a harsh war of attrition, sapping their desire to fight. Then Rommel's panzers would begin a counter-offensive, and he'd go on to take Alexandria. However, things were not going well on the German side. On September 23, Rommel was hospitalized in Germany due to illness, leaving General Georg von Stumme in command of a depleted panzer army. Montgomery planned his attack in two phases. The first, Operation Lightfoot, would involve a massive artillery barrage, followed by an assault by infantry divisions from the 30th Corps in the north, and the 13th Corps in the south. They would clear passages across the minefield for the 10th Corps armored divisions to pass through. Montgomery's forces began a five-hour bombardment of the Axis lines on the night of October 23, 1942. Four infantry divisions from the 30th Corps marched behind this, crossing the minefields. However, overcoming German defenses proved more difficult than anticipated. Heavy battle ensued, and the 8th Army slowly made its way forward. After von Stumme died of a heart attack while fighting, Rommel returned from Germany on October 25th to take command. The British advance was halted the next day, when German anti-tank guns took a severe toll on British armor, while attempting to expand the westward penetration. Montgomery directed the offensive northward from the Wedge on the night of October 28th, but this drive too, failed. The British lost four times as many tanks as the Germans in the first week of their offensive, but they still had 600 tanks available to the latter's 200. The battle lasted for 10 days. Minefields hindered the British advance, and they took many casualties as a result of them. As they advanced, many tanks lost their tracks. The battle began to resemble a World War I engagement, rather than the North African campaign's characteristic, of highly mobile units fighting each other. Montgomery started the second phase of his attack, Operation Supercharge, on the night of November 1st, with the goal of breaking through the remaining of the German defenses. The infantry divisions cleared the way for the armored divisions, and Rommel, with his force depleted and his fuel nearly finished, began to concede that the battle was lost, and began planning a retreat 50 miles west to Fuca. The second New Zealand division and the first armored division, met tough resistance while attacking behind an intense artillery barrage, but forced Rommel to commit his armored reserves. The Axis lost nearly 100 tanks in the ensuing tank battle. With his situation hopeless, Rommel informed Hitler that his army faced annihilation. Hitler ordered Rommel to stand and fight, but by the time the order arrived, the Panzer Army had already began to retreat. Rommel discovered that only about 50 tanks remained, after examining his armored divisions. These were quickly destroyed by British attacks. On November 4, Montgomery launched his final attacks, clearing the Axis lines and reaching open desert with the 1st, 7th and 10th armored divisions. Rommel was forced to leave many of his Italian infantry divisions, due to a lack of transportation. Rommel lost 2,350 men in the Second Battle of El Alamein, with 5,490 wounded, and 30,120 captured. 
Furthermore, his armored units effectively vanished as a fighting force. For Montgomery, the fighting resulted in 2,350 deaths, 8,950 injuries, and 2,260 missing, as well as the permanent loss of roughly 300 tanks. The Second Battle of El Alamein, a grueling battle similar to many fought during World War I, turned the tide in North Africa in favor of the Allies. Montgomery drove Rommel back to El Aghela in Libya, as he advanced west. After taking a break to rest and restore his supply lines, he resumed his attack in mid-December, forcing the German commander to retreat once more. With the help of American troops, who had landed in Algeria and Morocco, Allied forces evicted the Axis from North Africa on May 13, 1943. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.